Good morning, everybody. Sonda Delaja here from Kiev, Ukraine. Apostle Wiggins, blessings. Good morning. Mufelola. Oof. Sorry, I probably made a mistake there. Uh, just a minute, I think I'm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I think I made the mistake here. I think I put 12 years. Potential. Yep, I, I had made a mistake. I put the wrong years. Okay, now I think we're fine. I put the wrong years over there. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, sorry guys, I was fixing the title, I made a mistake. Well, um, let's please quickly go and share the link to this, uh, to this our uh, program. Today's topic is going to be extremely important because we are talking today about the adolescent age. That is the age of puberty for, uh, for a lot of children. Um, so um what we're going to do is uh, what we're going to do is you know we're going to talk about the changes that are happening in the life of uh all these children in the life of children at this age so please let's quickly go and share the link to this message i'll be talking about uh, the changes and, and how to parent children between the age of 12 and 17. Those are the most critical, critical age for for parents, and the most difficult age. The most difficult age for parenting is between twelve and seventeen, and that is what we are going to be talking about today. And because it's so it's so detailed and so much, so let's start and immediately. So go and share the link, and uh, here we go. Now I'm going to divide this into two categories. I'm going to talk about 
first of all talk about the children between 12 and 14 and then later on i will take it from between 15 and 17. so between the children between 12 and 14 what are the things that we should know as parents to parent these people first of all uh you must know that from the age of 12 the process of change and the process of uh teenage uh puberty begins to happen the adolescent age begins to happen for the children and the children the greatest need for them at this stage is that they want to discover themselves they want to find themselves and they just don't want to find themselves according to what you have told them they just don't want to find themselves according to what their parents have told them or what they have known from the children they begin to doubt everything from the age of 12 to 17 but you know they begin to you know question all the things that have been told i mean that have been told to them that have been taught to them but the greatest desire for them is for them themselves they want to discover themselves by themselves and for themselves and they want to also uh, demonstrate their uniqueness they want to demonstrate their uniqueness they want to demonstrate their um, their freedom their liberty and so they are, are looking for opportunity to be who they want to be they want to discover who they truly are they just don't want to believe the parents or what the public or anybody else is saying about them and as a result of that desire for children of this age to find themselves and to find their liberty their freedom and their yeah you know their 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 free expression yeah it begins to bring about conflict and it brings to, it begins to bring about disagreement between you know, this kind of children and the parents and because uh, they begin to disregard a lot of the parents instructions they begin to dis disregard a lot of the parents authority and the parents also are not used to this normally the two parents know exactly what is right and some parents who are not prepared for this kind of change might react emotionally and my you know that might increase the conflict and the disagreement in this relationship so so it is very why it is very important for children and i mean for parents at this stage to be wise it is very important for parents to be matured and you must bear in mind that this is what happens to all people all children between the age of 12 to 17 or 14 to 17. so it is advisable that parents should be less um, rigid at this point parents should be less categorical and uh, because if you are going to be rigid and categorical and you are going to be demanding obedience and um yeah if you're going to be demanding obedience and uh, order as you used to demand before these children will just respond to you in a very rude way so this could provoke rudeness from the ch from the children and it could lead to conflict and this this is a very good place for us to remember what paul said about the parents he said parents don't provoke your children so this is a, the, the time where you don't want to provoke children you don't want to provoke children between the age of 12 and 17 uh, because of their teen, teen years that is beginning. So uh, the children at this point, they begin to lose authority to their, I mean, they begin to lose respect to their parents. The, the authority of the parents begin to, begin to be secondary. And now uh, in the, the biggest authority in their lives becomes they themselves, their own opinion. They begin to respect more the opinion of their friends. They begin to respect more the opinion of people outside the family. They begin to respect more the opinion of uh, their teachers, or maybe not even their teachers, but their friends, their colleagues, people outside, people they see on television, the newspapers, magazines, and things like that. So it's more like a rebellious kind of tendency begins to come forward. Uh, so what happens in this stage is that the parents must know this and just smile it off instead of responding and be aggressive and be angry you should just be sit down and have more patience as a parent and listen to them more and you know hear them more and then just share with them as friends just share with them as friends another problem that uh, these kids face at this point is that they like to retreat they like to retreat into themselves and withdraw into themselves so they will not you know talk to you as much as they used to talk to 
they will not open up themselves as much as they used to open themselves. They will withdraw to their rooms if they have a room of their own. If they don't have a room of their own, it's even worse. Because then they will go, they will be going to their friends and they will remain uh, where their friends are. So they are withdrawn they, they into themselves. They, uh, they want to be on their own. They want to do what they want to do. They, they begin to change some things in their rooms. They might be painting their rooms or they might be putting some pictures on their walls and, you know, doing all kind of uh, uh, things that are difficult for a, a, an adult to explain. Uh, things that are difficult for adults to explain. Um, okay, I see that Amonike is having a bad day today. Wow. Amonike, we join you uh, today for, on your birthday and we celebrate you. You've been very active on this platform. Amonike, by the way, is a singer. And uh, yeah, I think you are the singer, yes? She's a singer and she has some albums out there on YouTube. I listened to two of her songs, beautiful songs, Christian album, Christian singer, worship leader. So we, we are praying that God will lift you up to a new height this this birthday and that, uh, you know, his favor will rest upon you and you will fulfill your heart desires, uh, both for your uh, family, for your children, for yourself, for your career, and that uh, the, the bright light of God we we'll keep on to shine upon you and over you. So we, we, we love you. Thank you for your active participation in our in class all the time. We, we, we just release the grace and the blessings of God upon you uh, that God will visit you, uh, you know, like never before in a new way. In Jesus' name. Happy birthday. So um, anyway... Uh, children of this age, between the age of 12 and 17, they begin to doubt themselves. At this stage, these kind of children begin to have a lot of doubt. They begin to doubt themselves. They begin to doubt their, if they are beautiful or not. They begin to doubt their physical look. They, don't, they are not sure if they are handsome. They begin to compare themselves with other people. Some of them begin to think that they are not normal. Some of them think that they are too short or they are too fat or they are too slim or they are you know, they begin to doubt themselves. They begin to have lack of confidence in themselves. They begin to question everything about their lives. Um, and they begin to be concerned about how they look. They begin to experiment different things. <laughs> Maybe with their hairstyle or with the way they dress or with the way they look. They want to copy other people. They want to experiment what they see on TV, in the newspapers. They want to give themselves a new identity. All kind of things like that begin to happen. Um, they begin to look for love at this stage, at this stage of their lives, from the age of twelve and seventeen. They begin to look for expression of love. They want to be loved, uh, and they begin to look for love, not just the kind of love that mm, they get from their parents, because of the puberty stage uh, and the development stage that is going on in them. They begin to look for love from their friends, from their uh, acquaintances, from their you know, from their colleagues and from their peers. Uh, unfortunately, it is at this stage that these kind of children have a big possibility of falling in the wrong hands, and especially in the wrong company, in the wrong company of friends. Uh, they want to try, because they want to try everything. They want to try everything that they were not having before. They think that they've been, at this age, children begin to feel that they've been deprived of some things. They think they've been deprived of wisdom, I mean, of uh, freedom. So they want to have all the freedom that they want. They think they have been deprived of uh, of liberty to be able to do whatever they want. So they want to try everything. And if they are not careful and if they are not well guided and super, supervised, they could fall into the bad company of people where people might uh, propose to them to drink or to smoke or to, you know, use drugs or to, be, to, uh, to experiment in sex. So these are some of the challenges that uh, children between the age of 12 and 14 will face. So what should the parents do? What are the, some of the things that uh, parents will have to pay attention to? What are the things that parents will need to pay attention to? Number one, uh, 
the parents have to pay atten a particular attention to patients. Parents have to be more patient with them at this time. Number two, parents have to listen to them more at this time. Number three, the parents must try to be their, become their friends, much more closer to them as friends, talk to them as friends at this time. Number four, parents must try to talk to them and become more like their colleagues and equals and friend, become like their best friend, like equal. Treat them like adults, like equal. Next point, parents must try to give them a lot of welcoming embrace. Welcoming embrace. You have to welcome them. You have to embrace them more. Uh, you have to really win their confidence more. Make, win their confidence more. Next point, show to them with everything you can that they are loved. So at this stage, it is a good thing to take the children out to the restaurant or to cafe, uh, maybe one on one with the mother or the, with the father. To it's another thing. It's, it's a good thing also to make them be involved in the church. You know, at this time, let them begin to serve in the church. Let them begin to because they want to practice new things. They want to begin to experiment themselves. They want to begin to practice and see themselves as needed and needful and and that they are you know that they find a place for themselves so make them join the choir or make them join the either they join the choir or you make them to join the uh theater group or somewhere where they could you know they could they could uh they could see that they are active they are actively involved in something um so another thing that you want to do as a parent at this time is um, you want to find out to ask them questions more direct questions at this time how they are doing what are the changes you don't want to, to, to put them to in, to in a situation where they are too embarrassed of course you don't want to over overload them with questions but uh, give them ask questions and don't push them to answer the questions just ask the question and let them be the ones to give them the freedom, the liberty, either to answer or not to answer, or to answer immediately or not to answer immediately. But just let them know that you are uh, interested in their well-being. Um, you want to also listen more to his opinion. That's even more important than you know asking him questions. But uh, the problem is that at this stage, they might not even be willing to talk. They, might, they, they talk less. And they really must find your trust before they begin to open up to you. They begin. They need to really know that you you are, you are trusted. You trust them well. Um, so, but so you want to begin to book appointment with them. Add an appointment with them in different places. You can go to the park with them or go to a party with them. Take them out. Begin to treat them like adult, like you know, like you really respect them. Begin to take them out to places maybe it's for shopping or for um, for you girls for example maybe to do their nails or to do you know begin to treat them like really ladies then they will find it make sure that you have make them to find it more interested in, more interesting with you than with the with the friends or with the you know with the with the peers where they are that is the idea the parents must create an atmosphere whereby uh, the children are much more um, friendly with them and they find it much more exciting uh, with them, with the parents, than with other people outside. Maybe you want to begin to cook with them or teach them to cook different things or to, to do some more practical things that will be interesting for them. Uh, another thing you might, you, want, you might want to do at this time is you want to have less less uh, laws and rules. Don't have too many rules at this time because they don't li like rules this time. This is a time when children don't like rules. They don't like routine. They don't like rules. And they don't like to be driven and to be commanded. You know, So they want to be given as much liberty as possible at this time. Um... But if you win their confidence at this time, then, you know, they will never have secret life from you anymore. 
they'll be, be able to trust you almost for the rest of their life and be able to open up to you. Um, at this time, you also want to help them find uh, interesting things to, to be engaged in. Maybe hobbies, maybe you want to go and get them involved in some activities. The activities that will expose them to a new uh, area of life, a new form of sport, a new form of entertainment, a new form of uh, extracurricular activities, a new form of uh, hobbies. You know, maybe you want to uh, register them in a, in a tennis tennis club or in a, some other clubs or debate clubs or some clubs that things that they might find interesting. Maybe to do some photographing or video or something like that. Just something new. They want new things at this time. Or writing club, or debating club, or or video shooting, or you, just something new, something different, and something that they will find exciting for themselves, and something maybe even different from what other people are doing around them. And maybe if you find also, you know, they might you might want to arrange so that they have they fall into the right company and in the right uh, you know group. So if you have relatives of teenagers from of their age from the church or from other place you know we invite this is the time when you want to invite people to come and sleep in your house more to come and spend the night with you and, and to come and be with you on during the weekend especially people of their age so that they are more finding people who are constructive who are christians who are real who who you could trust to be around them and to help them at this time and then also they might also be interested in going to spend time with their friends or to travel to another place on holidays or on, you know to just visit people but you know if you can get them around to people who are who, who, who are more constructive who are more you know much more better people that would be a great help too Another thing you want to pay attention to as a parent at this time is that you don't want to uh, be stopping them from talking. You don't want to uh, be standing on their way so much. You want to give them freedom. You want to, you know, uh, let them speak their mind. You want to let them do most of the things they want to do that are not sinful and that are not negative. Uh, And you don't want to, you know, do anything that will make him to lose. You don't want to do anything that will make him to lose his self-respect. So, uh, yeah, so some of these things are the things that you you need to pay attention to Why it's bringing up children between the age of 12 and 14. The next group that I will talk about today is how to raise up children between the age of 15 and 17. But before I talk about that, let me see some of the things that you people are writing here. Let me see some of your comments or some of your questions so that we'll be able to address those questions before we we go we go on. Okay, G. D. Craig said, My children are within this age bracket. Very important topic for me. All ears. Okay. In the evening, I will be talking more, uh, more um, concretely on the changes that will be happening to the teenagers in the evening. So I'm talk, going to talk about the girls and the boys, what, are, what is happening to them, the changes. And I will talk also about the parents, how they should react and respond to some of those changes. Nkiru said, Pastor, you are so much on point. Well, T.Y., parents should not be as ins insistent on obedience as before. It's a stage where instead of instructions, more discussion is appreciated. Yes, that's T.Y. saying that. Although our formula said, when parents who are not prepared for these changes, with parents who are not prepared for these changes, it brings rudeness from the kids, parents lose control and authority over their children. Yep. Deborah said they listen more to their friends and share ideas and take uh, and talk about their experiences at home. Yep. Olua Fumula said the teens at this stage 
will withdraw, become secretive, uh, or put up pictures in their rooms. It is a, yeah, you're right. Uh, Moji Yagbe Agape said, you are very right, especially we that are brought up by African parents and we still have their ways in our actions, but it's not working, especially in the children in, in Europe. We now take things easier. Yeah, that's wisdom. T.Y., oh my God, I did not know why my son suddenly at that time was always in his room, did not like going with me and my daughter to the movie anymore. I was trying to force him, see war. Yeah? Uh, all from liars say, okay, now. That is congratulating. Uh, Modupe said, um, like my daughter would say sometimes to me, Mom, why am I too tall? <laughs> yes. They begin to question a lot of things about themselves. They are too tall, too small, too fat, too black. Uh, T.Y. says, Dr. S Dr. Adelaide, you are so right. Now my daughter is in that place, always complaining about her looks, but I am quick to affirm her, but it's not easy. Different hair styles, I have to cough up the money, clothes, designers, but I learned so much on this platform. It's not easy parenting teenagers, it's not easy. All from life said they want to have all the freedom they need guidance at this stage. They come under so much pressure. Yep. Omonika said, Pastor Sunday, yes, at this stage they argue a lot. They uh, want their own opinion to be taken. They want to stay over uh, in their friends' houses. They always have a lot of friends. Yep. That's it. And um, Kiru said, I tell my 12-year-old daily to look at herself in the mirror and understand that if there are two beautiful women on her, she is one, then I'm next. <laughs> Although our former liar is writing some of the things I said that Parents must be patient at this time, become their friends, welcome and embrace them, show them love, do movies with them one-on-one, -on -one, give them responsibility. Oh, they don't like responsibility at this time, really. <laughs> you want to give them more liberty and freedom of expression. Yes, treat them like adults, book appointments with them. T.Y. says, my mentor, wow, my teenage life was traumatic. In fact, life threatened me. I ran away from home, so I promised myself not to do that to my daughter. So I hung out with her a lot. Recently, she did an assignment on which she wants to be Lyme. And she said, my mom, she did such a beautiful piece. And the teachers asked to see me and show me. I was so teared up. It was worth it folks not easy but worth it mm -hmm. yes sometimes i splash on her take her to an expensive restaurant red carpet events but not too much because she has diver tendencies uh monica pastor sunday yes parents should be friendly with them at this age otherwise they will corrupt them outside yep agape said teenagers are very sensitive to deal with i have three in my house right now they are more close to themselves than to us parents between 14 to 17. i had them close to each other they always accuse me of thinking they are doing something bad outside, but I keep telling them no. Rasmussen said, how do you get them away from the games when all their friends do games? You know, get them uh, together with more friends, with other friends uh, that might be more, you know, more focused, more better uh, laid, you know, brought up. And another way to get them out of the games is to travel with them or to take them out. 
take them out to do some more interesting things, take them out to do sports, to do football, soccer, tennis, take them out to do games or uh, debates or, you know, your theater or restaurant or, you know, just go take them out from where they, you know, they, they, they will express themselves better. They just want to express themselves. So when there is no way for them to express themselves, they go into games. A.K. Johnson, at this age, children seek to have independence and seek an environment where experimentation is encouraged. So that is why parents must create a conducive environment that encourages growth and not enforcement of rules. Yes. Uh, Pearl David, this stage is very sensitive as there are still children. They are still children, but trying to solidify who they are being insensitive backing out law laws and being a bully for a parent only is ins, ins, isolates them more go on date with your kids and stop verbalizing your insecurities weekly in front of them mention it and encourage yourself immediately so they can not note you are human and see they are normal uh, not crazy Monica, Pastor Sunday, yes, I am happy for this topic. My daughter took away talking about her looks. I always tell her that she was beautiful. Although I formula, your pastor, you're absolutely right. I find it difficult, but God help me. They want sincerity. Nikki says, I've been able to gain the confidence of my 12-year-old boy that he tells me everything. Wow. T.Y. said, that game thing, you cannot win, especially boys. We had to negotiate about uh, the number of hours every day. Uh, Pearl David, I have been in the modeling industry. I overshadowed them with compliments and mothers pulled me aside to appreciate me for what I did and how it was done. Also, in fashion retail for five years, I wasn't an associate in my opinion. I was a fashion emotional therapist because I was a mediator among mothers and daughters, and many, many of them returned with pictures uh, by friends in Facebook and have my number. Mothers, especially with your daughters, you have to listen. You cannot force confidence or erase insecurity if you don't meet them where they are. Modupe, my daughter is into basketball and she loves it and do happy for her. I'm happy, do happy, I'm happy for her always. Yep. Okay, now let's continue. Now let's talk about the second age group that we, we want to talk about today. The second age group is... Um, the peculiarities of bringing up children between the age of 15 and 17. 15 and 17. So this is the height of adolescent, uh, adolescent pu puberty uh, changes in teenagers, puberty in teenagers. So at this time, uh, very close to the age of 14, the changes uh, it's very close to the age of what happens in the age of 12 and 14 but you know this is even more more emphasized more heightened what happens here number one children at this age between the age of 15 and 17 they go into themselves uh, that is at home they might be expressive outside among their friends among their colleagues they are more expressive uh, outside among their colleagues but in the house they go into themselves more. They become more introvert, introvert. And uh, they get annoyed more. They get irritated easier. They get more easily irritated. They get more annoyed easily. They argue more with their parents. They disagree more because they want their own opinion to be heard. Um, you know, they can become depressed for no reason. Uh, they might become you know, angry for no reason as well. Uh, they might, you might not know what is happening to them. They might just be moody. 
so these are going to count some of the ch uh, changes that are happening to them because they their body is going through a lot of chemical and hormonal changes and their body is being rearranged to be from child to adult so and uh, they, they don't always know what is happening to them and one of the things to do with the children at this age is to talk to them about the adolescent a, a stage of their development and to tell them also about these changes that will happen uh, and let them know that this is not because they are not normal that it's not because they are bad it's not because their parents are bad that this is not anything of their fault or the fault of their parents and that this is just uh, the way it is and that everybody goes through it so you need to sit down with them one on one maybe go to a restaurant with them and sit down where you can talk with them or go to a, for a walk or to the park and you know where you can just sit down and make them relax and let, let them be in a trusting situation where they will be trusting you where they could you know they could know that you are sincere with them and you love them so you are showing them love and telling them the truth so make sure you take them out or somewhere or you have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with them and explain to them that you might feel you might see yourself getting annoyed in some cases that you might see yourself getting irritated or that you don't want to listen to mom or dad it's not because you are bad we understand that but try to control it try to control it don't be under the power of your emotions don't be under the power of instinct become over your instincts you know control your instinct don't just answer so teach them to cope with those changes teach them what is happening to them let them know the things that are happening to them and let them know that it's not because they are like that that is just because of the chemical reaction that is happening in their body um, so um, another thing you want to do for the children at this age is that you want to encourage them to grow you want to give them you, know, you want to create for them uh, an environment of freedom to, for them to explore let them explore themselves let them explore different opportunity maybe you want to encourage them to read more to do new things give them different options create different environment for them to be able to grow and to be able to express themselves another thing you want to do for them at this age is you want to show them uh, more of love love softness in love you want to show them not tough love at this point but softness in love you want to see them soft love, soft love. Uh, you want to hug them more. You want to touch them, talk to them, joke with them, laugh with them more. You know, make them do things that will help them to relax, to be, to be more relaxed. Uh, and you also want to, you know, make sure that you don't provoke them at this time. Make sure that you, you know, you don't provoke them. You don't argue with them. Agree with them more. Treat them more with that, like adults and encourage them more. You know, ask them to do things through encouragement rather than through command. Uh, uh, you know, talk to them more, through, you know, through suggestion that I think maybe you want to do this or something and give them more liberty. Maybe you need them to do this thing now, but, you know, they, they might do it maybe one hour later. So, you know, have more patience with them. Have more patience with them. Um... So parents need a lot of a, a lot of patience at this time, uh, and you need a lot of uh, closeness to them to so to be patient with them, to be more understanding with them, and to try to build more close relationship. Um, you know, uh, to a large extent, between the age of fifteen and seventeen, to a, you will think you have a new child. You will think that is not your child again. You might think that uh, something has happened, that so they have changed your child. So you have to actually basically get to know that child all over again. It is getting to know that baby all over again. You know, you have to just get to discover him again. You'll be discovering new things, and new, new, new qualities, and new, ch new, new child in your baby. Um, so, you know, make sure that you you don't. You are not afraid as parents make sure that you are not afraid of this period make sure that you don't go panicky because when those changes begin to come a lot of parents begin to become panic and they are afraid and because they are panic they begin to make a lot of mistakes and they begin to make things worse for themselves but instead of panicking just relax with them and just laugh over it and let them enjoy it make sure you know tell yourself that you are going to enjoy the process 
and tell him and her or your daughter also that they are going to enjoy the process. That is a process of change. That is an exciting and interesting. Just even explain to them to even expect all those things so that they will be joking over it with you and you laugh over it and they will know yeah, that you know these are normal things and that they will overcome it and that it's not going to last for long. So show them with, I mean, show them and overwhelm them with love uh, and so let them know that they are not going through this situation alone and that you are passing through it together with them, that you are passing uh, through it uh, together with them. Of course, at this time, they don't want to be around you too much. At this time, a lot of these uh, children, they don't want to be around their parents a lot. They want to actually, some of them want to even distance themselves from their parents. They don't even want their friends to see them together with you. So respect that sometimes. If they don't want to go out with you, they don't want their colleagues or their friends to see them together with you. Okay, just know that it is a temporary thing. Don't be annoyed. Don't be embarrassed. You know, just know that, you know, it's okay. It, it will get over it. It will get over it. Uh, so don't begin to put uh, barriers or some, you know, yeah, and some uh, limitations on its way. If you put some prohibitions and begin to ban him and prohibit him from doing a lot of stuff, that's only going to make things worse. That's only going to make things worse. Uh, so don't provoke your child at this time. Uh, make sure that you rather support them. The only thing that you want to pay attention to is that they don't become rude and they don't become uh, criminals and do things that are against the law at this time. Make sure you watch over them that they don't begin to get, fall into the wrong hands and into the wrong companies where they will begin to do unlawful things like drugs or smoke or drink or, you know, or stealing things and something because they want to experiment themselves sometimes under the wrong influence they might experiment themselves in bad things also um, at this time it is important that you praise him a lot um, give him a lot of praise give him a lot of compliments compliment the way they look compliment the way they try compliment their success rejoice with them in their success uh, the things that they are trying and let them know that they are trying and get them involved with the church activities at this time. Get them involved with, with the community activity. Get them involved with social activities, sportive activities and give them options where they could choose what to do so that they will be able to express themselves. And that is what one of the things that they really want to do at this time. Now, at this time also, you know, parents should understand that they will be make, these children will be making a lot of mistakes. They will be doing some things wrong and they will be, you know, they might be rude sometimes, they might be angry sometimes, they might be depressed sometimes, they might have uh, mood swings sometimes, uh, sometimes they might, you know, raise their voice, you know, but you have to be more covering, you have to be more forgiving as parents at this time and you have to let them know that, you know, everybody can make mistakes. And that, you know, you must let them know that you cover for them, you forgive for them. So they must also think that you are more forgiving at this time, that you are more toler tolerating and that you are more, uh, yeah, you are more supportive of them, even in their mistakes and in their imperfection. So instead of just correcting them, correcting them all the time, sometimes you might want to just close your eyes and say, don't worry about it. Even when they are failing and making mistakes, you might want to support them and comfort them and say, okay, Forget about it, it's okay. You know, we'll get over it, you know. At this time of their growth, in between the age of 15 and 17, these children really appreciate uh, truthfulness. They appreciate truthfulness and uh, honesty. So they want you to be honest with them. They want you to even tell them your own experience. and to, But they don't want you to use your experience to tell them how to live. They don't want you to tell them how to live, but they just want to appreciate your sincerity and that you are sincere with them and that you are truthful with them and that you are direct with them. That will also help them to be able to open up to you and be more direct. Uh, they are very sensitive to lies at this time. They are very sensitive to uh, self-righteousness. So they don't want you as the parents to behave as if you are the one who knows it all. They don't want you to believe to behave as if you are the, you are the one that is next to Angel Gabriel or 
uh, holy Mary. They don't want holy, holy, holy thing. They don't want hypocrisy. They don't want too holy kind of attitude. So you, don't, you know, j just for you to be more moderate and more liberal, liberal with them. Um, and you yourself should be able to admit some of your faults and some of your weaknesses, and they appreciate that rather than uh, you just telling them that you are perfect and they are the ones who are not perfect. So that kind of openness and truthfulness with them will really help them to be more trusting and to open themselves up to you also uh, much more better. Of course, at this time, they want to relate more with their friends than with you. The people who influence them more at this stage are their colleagues, their peers, their friends, people they see on the television and the newspapers. Uh, they are more, you know, they, they come under the influence of people outside uh, than people, than the parents. They kind of look down on the advice and the influence of the parents. Uh, but this, you know, it's just for the main time. But if you are able to become their friends, then, you know, you know that doesn't happen to them. Then they, they still count you as their best friends and their confidence. Um, so you let them have more freedom at this time with their friends so that they could go out to, with their friends to do more sports, hobby, maybe to invite their friends to the house or for them to go out and play with their friends more or, you know, or spend more time with their friends, maybe, you know, to do some things together with people of their age. Uh, so maybe you want at this time your children to be more involved with the youth group, uh, with the maybe praise and worship group in the church or with the sports groups or some clubs. Those will also help them. So make sure that they, they are not afraid of you. Make sure they are not afraid that they will bring their friends and you will not understand or something like that. Make sure that you let them have that freedom, that they have the freedom to bring their friends, to open up and to do uh, everything that they would like to do uh, or less things that are sinful. At this point, of course, your child will become more resolute and more stronger in his own opinion, more stubborn. Uh, he will be pushing forward his own opinion and he will be much more bolder in expressing himself, in saying this. He will be more willing to argue with you, to debate you, and to uh, affirm his own mm, rightness, that he is right and you are wrong. He's, he's more willing to argue with you that, you know, what he is doing is right. So, you know, when he becomes stronger, you should just make sure that you are willing to compromise and to become softer and to step back a little bit just for the sake of winning him rather than arguing with him or telling him he's wrong and, you know, losing him. You don't want to lose him as a result of that because he's still looking for himself and he wants to affirm himself. He wants to show himself that he's a man or he's a woman that is independent, that he's grown up, he's an adult. So that's why he's... Uh, He's going to be insisting on doing things in his own way. He wants to find his own self. He wants to find his style. So he might be experimenting with his look, with his hairstyle, with his, you know, with the way he dresses, with the way he looks. Give him a lot of freedom to be able to do that as well. Uh, so don't use, you know, prohibition and banning as your instrument at this time. Use more liberty, freedom and um, respect, more respect and honor to him as well. Uh, that will really help more than uh, trying to just prohibit and ban him. You can also use a lot of jokes and laughing and uh, that also will, will help, you know, that to make sure that you, he will think that you understand him better. Um, yeah, so some of those things are the things that you want to you know, do with your children at this age. Uh, I'm going to mention more concretely things to remember. But before I mention those things to remember, uh, let me read some of the comments you are writing here. Noel 
Okushuku said, I'm so delighted about this inf sensitive information. It is awesome. Obi Ojima, this is the stage where they either gain uh, your confidence or you lose them. Gift says, yes, at this stage, they want your sincerity in everything. Yep. Poor David says, yeah, they cannot wait to leave the house, especially if they have what they consider a bully, a totalitarian dictator as a parent. Yep. Falasha, they said, wow, it's so hard at this stage. for Yes, for parents and for them too. A.K. Johnson says, thank you, Pastor Sonda Delaja, for your teaching and humble spirit. I heard you call my name and read my comment. That makes me feel so privileged and wowed. <laughs> Blessings, blessings. Gide Craig said, I thank God for my three boys daily. They are re responsible and respectful boys. They are close to us and I've been able to freely discuss everything from sex to career with them. They share their hurts, concerns, and even love issues with me. They feel more like my partners <laughs> these days. <laughs> He's very rewarded. Wow. <laughs> Shigo Mwafa said, I was a teenager not too long ago. Rebellious because no one paid too much attention to me. I was in my own world. I would cut up my clothes to make my own styles, not even caring what they cost. I remember that creating a headband was my priority almost always. I just took to reading and learning the piano. My boys are 10 now and early developers and I'm watching them like a orc. Life is good. <laughs> Obi Ojimadu. Oh, get inferior they get inferiority or they get inferiority complex. They worry about how they look. The girls want to be sure they look uh, they like the lads like them enough. Parents must help them develop their self-confidence. Formula, all of Formula your dinner. They are more introvert. They argue. They get angry, moody because their bodies go through hormonal changes. Irriti, coming late to the show, but I'm going to enjoy this. My first son is going to be 15 soon. Wow. All of Formula your dinner said parents should educate them with style about what is happening to them because they don't know. T.Y. says, seriously, I thought I, it was just me. She is so short-tempered. We always argue on, oh dear, so it's normal. This would have saved hours of argument, even with my son, but he is more uh, cerebral. He engages you with superior argument. This is a big relief, my mentor. Uh, <laughs> Poor David, it is important at this age that your child think out loud. Many uh, children lose it at this age. They are depressed, suicidal, or, or hazard to others because they are confused about their feelings and what their body is metamorphosizing into. Yeah. Obi Ojimadu, this is the stage where they, end, they either gain confidence or develop inferiority complex. They worry about how they look. Yeah. The girls want to be sure they look lady enough. Parents must help them develop self-confidence. <laughs> Poor David says, honestly, the way you handle this stage uh, determines how your relationship will play out when they become adults or leave the home. As mother, you remember your labor and breastfeeding them, but as adult, they mostly remember this stage and how you respond, re responded and delivered. Agape say, you are right, Pastor Sunday. I have to take it easy if I don't want stress for myself. I salute all single parents in this platform, but I would say teenagers need a, an adult male around them. Sometimes I tell them I will tell your dad, even though I will still be the one in the center. We always sit down after church on Sunday, 
all the family to eat, shout, and laugh. T.Y., I'm telling you they are quite a handful, and I worry so much about my son. He wanted to show me that he's now a man. We argued so much, then I tried emotional blackmail, and it didn't work. <laughs> Monica say, Pastor Sunday, they also like to be very free. They think they are old enough. I always say no to my daughter when she came out with the idea of wanting to sleep over at her friend's house. She knows my stand on that now. T.Y. Sorry, club is no, no, no. At age 15, oh, my daughter asked you to go, but I told her no. When I talk about club, I'm not talking about nightclubs. When I'm talking about clubs, I'm talking about professional clubs. I'm talking about clubs, maybe debating clubs or clubs where they do things. So when I talk about clubs, I'm not talking about nightclubs. So that's not what I mean at all. Gladys says, I always thought my daughter had a strong personality and strong mind, but I never knew that all the fault was coming from me. She always needed attention, but I always shout on her because I wanted her to be independent without teaching, uh, without teaching her how to be independent. Too late to know that I push her out of the, out of me because she is the oldest from four. Now, if I ask her uh, to do things for me, she refuses and she would tell me to do things with other children that I never listened to her when she talked to me, which she is right because she speaks too fast. I can't follow sometimes. Now she's a team, but always tell me she loved me because I'm her mother. I should not do the same to the junior ones. I feel she is more mature than myself. Wow. She go, I was called upon by a friend of mine whose son is 15 to come and get him out of his she's because uh, he won't talk to her, them and they think he admires and respects me. He will tell me things he won't tell his parents. Titi Lyo says, please sir, how do we help them with their career choice? My son only wants to play football and his academics isn't good at the moment. Uh, make sure that you, you know, you know, go and listen to my teachings on calling and purpose, and you know, if they could, you could get them to listen to that. That would be very helpful. Or you could listen and then give them some of the ideas. Agape, I always tell my children what I went through and the mistakes I made in my journey. I know they have it in mind, but they don't show. They are interested to hear it, yeah. Because you are, if you are telling them as to teach them, they will not show interest. But if you are just telling them as to entertain them, they will be more interested. T.Y., wow, you are just amazing, Dr. Deraja. This solves a lot of problems. My little madam will wonder what's come over me. She's so sweet. Yes, experimenting is the word Landry came with his dress, but uh, was too careful to say, darling, you look so much more handsome with that, your old hair, but not work. This did not work. He carried these dreadlocks for a while, and the thing is now sheep. <laughs> Abby Kosh, thank you very much for sharing with us this food for thought. I have learned a lot from this. I will work more. Close there with my son. Uh, Agape said, Yes, prohibiting and banning children. It's good you mentioned that. That's what my parents did to me, and that caused my journey to change. I sneak out and got pregnant at 20. I suffered so much. Long story. The girl is 31 today. Parents should be very careful of their action. Thank you, Pastor Sunday.
Nadi says, I'm firm but reasonable. We disagree to agree. We agree to disagree, I think. At this stage, at this age, my wife and I did all we could to instill confidence in both of them. Even though my son has referred to me as Gaddafi when he doesn't have his way. <laughs> Olufumulaya said, you are on point, sir. My daughter once told me, Mom, I'm 19. Don't intervene in my spiritual life. Please step back. You have told me and trained me how to know God. Allow me to discover God myself for myself. I know what I am doing. I'm very smart. I'm mature than my age, she said. When I tell people my age, they will tell me I'm very mature in the way I comport myself. Pastor, all you have said is very practical. You are emphasizing and enforcing it again. Thank you very much. Yep. She go, allow him to play football only uh, when he does well in school at this stage. Let one motivate the other until they get to a defining moment. That's an advice to the person who was asking. Okay, so let's let me conclude this message. Uh, how do you respond as a parent? What are the things that you must remember as a parent at this stage? Number one, don't give them false hope. Don't, uh, you know, don't be telling them something and you don't do it. Make sure that you are always truthful for, to your children at this time because they are very sensitive to lies. They are very sensitive to uh, Pharisee, Phariseeism. They don't want you to be a Pharisee. They don't want you to say something and leave another one. They don't want you to be hypo hypocritical. Anything that you are doing wrong, they are going to jump on it and they are going to think that you don't deserve their respect. And so they are going to rather go out and listen to other people. They might stop going to church. They might not be interested in church at this age, especially if they see that your life doesn't line up, that you are living one way and you are talking, you know, you are against the way you are teaching them to live. So you want to be sincere with them at this stage and you want to be real with them. So that's one of the things that are really important at this stage for your children. Make sure that you are not over righteous, you are not over holy, and that you come to their level. You come to their level, no hypocrisy. Number two, um, don't correct them in the presence of other people. Don't correct them openly or you know in the presence of other people. They think it's a disgrace and they are more sensitive about their uh, authority and their image at this time. So you want to protect them and be supportive of them, especially publicly and most of the time even privately. Number three thing that you want to be careful to do uh, is that even if they are disobedient, even if they are not listening to you, even if they don't do what you are telling them to do, be more patient with them. Express more patience and you know don't you know don't try to you know kill them or to crucify them immediately um, give them more patience give them second chance and and uh, just remind them with love and laugh over matters more rather than getting annoyed more uh, no but the next point that you want to do with them you want to listen to them more and you want to talk more with them as friends more like friends and history, you know, just chatting rather than, rather than giving instruction. Uh, don't give too much instructions. Don't give too much teaching. Just give too much. I mean, just make sure that you're just expressing yourself and exchanging like discussion, more from instruction to discussion. Next thing you want to do. Uh, You want to make sure that you have a trustworthy relationship with them. You know, show them that you trust them. Show them that you trust him. Tell him always that you trust him. You believe in him. Tell him that you believe in him. You, you know, give him more compliment. Give him more uh, support, trust. Show him respect. Show him compliment, respect, and honor. And that will make him to be soft in. To soft, not to be so hard against you, but to soft down and to want to treat you, you know, equally as well. Treat him like a, yeah, like a, like a grown-up person. Treat him like a grown-up person. So I will still talk tomorrow, tonight, probably tonight and tomorrow morning, I will be talking about the concrete changes that uh, 
that are happening in the body and in the lives of the teenagers, what are the changes happening to them, and how their parents correspond to that. What I did today is just parenting, yeah, uh, how to parent them. But tomorrow, tonight, I'm going to talk about what are the real changes that are happening and what parents should do about that. And then on Saturday morning also, I think I will continue on that. Then uh, on Sunday, I think I will end this t teaching by talking about uh, 18 year old. How do you treat and how do you raise up 18 year old uh, children? Okay, let me see some of your comments here. Neki Okoro, I was always shouting and arguing with my boys till I decided to listen to them more. We now live like brothers and sisters. Yeah, that's the key. By the way, if you have not shared this message yet, I think we really need to share this message. If there is a message that we need to share and distribute, is this one. So let's go and share the message, please. Let's go share the message. Poor David, my mother let me explore because she trusted me. She had done all and she trusted I was mature enough to be independent and she trusted me. That trust was my freedom. That trust made me accessible to her. My mom was the lawmaker, law overseer, uh, law enforcement and judge. <laughs> but she was emotionally available and my leash was if it doesn't make God proud. If mom isn't going to be happy, don't do it. And oh my God, it worked. Even in a death of almost 10 years, that is my motto. Wow. Gift Amos. At this stage of teenage life, when they cannot see their parents with an active example to hear and glean, learn from, they, they look for elderly people outside and choose other role models. Yep. T.Y. Don't give them false hope. If you promise them do so, to do something, do it. Don't pretend to be perfect. Yep. Glad this one was so. I'm so happy because I'm listening to Pastor Sunday with my husband who always runs to work. All, all awesome because this is what we really need. He even asked, can someone write Pastor Sunday over joy? Very good. Very good. But I hope you you are able to listen to the other Age, age groups as well. Uh, but or maybe you, your children are already bigger. T.Y. more. even as adults, we don't like hypocrites, dodgy and fakey people. So uh, teenagers don't like it even the more. Yep. She, she goes, says, treat them like adults. Yes. That's the key. Monica said, Pastor Sunday, yes, I'm guilty of correcting anywhere. I always see it in the face of my say it in the face of my daughter, and she feels too embarrassed, so I have to stop. Thanks for telling me this. G they said, at home, I'm the team leader, the pack leader. They tend to follow easily by example. I treat them with respect, listening and implementing some of their opinions. I don't treat them like little kids anymore because they don't see themselves as kids. <laughs> but adults <laughs> yeah i discipline them without violence but with words of reason we discuss yeah all <laughs> from Malaya says very informative god bless you pastor sunday sir god increase your wisdom she God says wow god bless you there is pastor sunday for this detailed truth i wish someone told somebody this in my own time I would not have been wanting to run out of my skin. Yeah. Abby Coach, thank you so much for this topic. It came at the right time. You're on point, sir. Very, very deep. Anastasia, Pastor, you are doing, you are going to do, I know, are you going to do any teaching about relating to adult children, 18 to 25? Yes, I just said that, that tonight, uh, on Sunday, I'm going to do uh, for 18 for 18 year olds and if necessary i could do for higher ones but uh we'll be talking about other topics like how to talk to your children and how to you know 
become a hero. No, all that topic, I will tell you, all that topic will be treated as well. Well, from Lao say, wow, sir, you are so phenomenal. Thank you on behalf of our teenagers, our parents, and this platform. Uh, T.Y. say, big up, Dr. Adelaja. We are so blessed. Thank you, sir. Thank you, too. I, I, I told you people that I'm writing, I'm busy this week writing <laughs> like 70 page, 70 page article on, um, on MMM. With people in Nigeria know what that means now. And you, you people must read the one of today. Some of you have been reading. Shigo said she has read some of the ones I wrote before. And I think T.Y. said also she had read them. And uh, I wonder if you people will see the one of today. The one of today will really is really very, uh, you know, if there is anyone you must read, you should read the one of today. Uh, this uh, about the T, about the uh, MMM ten. Okay, Paul said I was a difficult child compared to my sister Gold, whose relationship with mom was so open, honest, and inclusive. And from watching that, I wanted that and began opening up. Yeah, that's a good example. Yeah, Shigo, I promise you that I will release the one of today. The article is already out already. So if you go. After this program, you look on my Facebook here, on the or on my blog, you'll be able to see the article for today. Yeah, it's out already. Confi said, thank you very much, Dr. Adelaja. Most of us have made a lot of mistakes. Thank you for the, my last two children. Uh, Deborah said, they're in Kenya now. Yeah. Dr. David said, I read them and shared it, so uh, ignorance and foolishness is contagious at MMM. Shigo said, I want to make a video about it, stemming from your write-ups. Yeah, I think you should. It, you know, maybe not just one video, maybe you need to do a lot of videos. Especially Shigo, if you can do it, you being Igbo, it will really be, it will really be very powerful. Uh, because you know, of course, that the people who brought it to Nigeria are Igbos, of course. <laughs> Igbos are the champion in these states. <laughs> they recruit the Yorubas to speak the grammar for them, but uh, Igbos are the brain behind it. And so if you do it, they, maybe they will, but you expect some tongue lashing. <laughs> I'm receiving a lot of those now. <laughs> So I didn't do video. I don't even want to do video because they are going to come against me. <laughs> so, you know, if you can do video, uh, Shigo, I will really appreciate it because you can really help our brothers. <laughs> Igbo Kwenu. <laughs> so... <laughs> So, video, I mean, Shigo, please do the video. I beg, I beg, Una. Dr. Sufficient is posting the link to the article here already and she's also posting an, uh, an announcement for the HMT for those who might want to come for the HMT uh, in January from the 2nd to the 6th of January and uh, uh, and I also want to say Dr. Sufficient will be with me tomorrow evening for the for the guest of the program. So Dr. Sufficient, is, she's releasing a book this week on Saturday, I think tomorrow. So she's going to be doing the presentation of her book with me tomorrow evening. So invite your friends. I'm going to be interviewing Dr. Sufficient. Uh, Agape said, I will go and read your article after this because I really want to understand the meaning of MMM. Thank you, sir. Oh, today I will, I'm not talking about the meaning so much, but... Uh, but today's article is going to be revolutionary for the whole country, uh, for the whole country, I guess. But, you know, you, if you want to really understand the meaning of MMM, you might want to go and read all the previous articles as well. 
There have been three articles before now. So today's own is the fourth one. Anyway, it was nice talking to you guys. And I hope it was helpful. Uh, see you tonight. God bless. Bye.